I'm Luto. And I'm Ripper. Um, we try to be independent from the Weather Channel and get our own weather images from the satellites uh, cruising above the Earth. At least we tried to. Didn't really work out, but we're going to show you a bunch of stuff anyway. Um, this all started when I was terribly, terri when I was terribly bored one day watching videos on the internet and somebody, a teacher actually from uh, South America, built uh, this weather, built this, we built this antenna to fetch images from weather satellites and documented the whole process, uh, put it up on the internet, um, documented it really nicely. And we try to reprodu uh, reproduce that to know what we are talking about. NASA, or at least the US government, put up these nice big satellites you can see there on the left. Um, so they can photograph the Earth from, from above and make predictions about the weather in the near term future. The images that are supposed to be coming out of them, you can see on the right. They're quite simple, but still nice to look at. So we got a bunch of stuff, ordered most of it from, from eBay, and we, had, we tried, we actually succeeded, to build the antenna you can see on the right there. So to build an antenna, you need a bunch of tools. This one is one we have got, uh, we've got at MetaLab. I don't actually know how to, I didn't know how to use it. Now I know how to use it a little, but he knows how to actually use it. Your brother is this. Yeah, this is a lathe and we used it to connect the wire of the antenna to the rods which are sticking up above my head here and trying to poke out uh, eyes. Um, to connect the wires you can solder aluminium to copper so we used uh, uh, the lathe to make uh, threads into the rods which you can see on the picture and once we got all threaded we screwed the uh, we crimped uh, some connectors to the wires and crimp, uh, screwed everything together. You probably wonder why we used so big washers. Yeah, that's because we had these connectors, which were just regular water plumbing uh, T pieces. They were just designed to magically uh, hold in there the the rods. So we. Uh, and we, uh, so I designed a part uh, which would then be 3D printed and where we put in all the big washers to secure the rods into the piece so the uh, spacing is correct and we can receive correct images. Yeah. So in the end it kind of looked like this. Uh, looked like this. We've got uh, four of these finished. We actually did that uh, back in Vienna. Um, prepared most of the work and to get these four pieces to stick together. The, um, the designer of this antenna just recommended using a red box, which you can see here. There are no further specifications how to build this red box, so... Yeah, they recommend, I think they recommended some plastic uh, box you use in electric house electricity for wiring, for connecting cables, which didn't seem sturdy enough to us. So again, use some CAD. Um, I designed this nice connector which uh, clamps onto the PVC uh, pipes. Uh, this is the bottom part, this is the upper part with a banana for scale and enough screws to, to secure all the pipes really tight. So to actually manufacture this thing, uh, this thing like with the smaller connectors we uh, went with 3D printing. First we tried the 3D printer in the uh, in the hex space, which actually produced something and finished, but it kind of looked like this. And you can see a bunch of globs here and a uh, bunch of a bunch of missing layers. Yeah, yeah, probably don't see that really precisely on the uh, screen, but there we had some problems with under extrusions, uh, something with the filament was probably wrong, so the part wasn't really sturdy. So we had that genius idea. Use that part that took, I don't know, uh, 15 hours to print, uh, put it in the oven and uh, heat treat it so the layers bond together and we get a sturdy part. 100, 100 degrees Celsius sounded about right for pet G. So we started that and received the result. You got a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> um, pancake is right here. If you want to look at it later, it's a beautiful work of art, but it's not really useful to build an antenna anymore. Yeah. 
Probably oh, well. we're a bit more than 100 degrees Celsius, but I'm not sure about that. <laughs> so we asked a friend of us who actually owns a 3D printer and is sitting back there somewhere um, to print the part for us, which then actually works and looks way nicer than the first version. Just takes like 12 and a half minutes to print this thing. And keep in mind, we did like four or five, four or five tries on this. So you can imagine the total printing time and amount of uh, material we uh, put through the thing. So now we got all the parts. We got our red box, which is now actually green or black, depending on the version you're looking at. And we got all the arms. Um, so in Metalab, still in Vienna. Um, we put it all together, screwed it all together, and then you got a final, lovable, finished antenna, which you can hack and snuggle with, or you can use it to... Uh, Step people in the eyes, because we cut this uh, pipe exactly to two meters to have a nice height about the ground, above the ground uh, to get a nice image, which is also really suitable if you want yeah, use the rods to uh, po uh, poke people into the eyes. Kind of a design fail, but well, and then that was like a week ago. Then we went to Campus Plus, just takes uh, 30 hours from Vienna if you go by foot. And <laughs> uh, well, the antenna first got disassembled and we put it into the car, drove it down there by foot. And we didn't actually do the wiring in Vienna, we just put it together to see if it stays together and it did but we re really didn't test it or do anything more than um, than take uh, funny pictures with it the mechanics worked perfectly so we thought that we can do the rest here at camp plus plus we actually did um, so we twisted some wires together added solder to it so it sticks nicely and put it all together according to the wiring diagram yeah which which is kind of generic, but it worked. Yeah, you just um, connect all the the shielding of the opposite dipoles together, and then you connect the cores of the wires uh, to the shielding of the wire leading to the antenna, and the other two to the core, and it should work. Really easy. Just one and a half hours of soldering <laughs> and cable tying things together. So then we fill all of that into the into the middle connector. And we got a finished antenna, which we put on top of the tent. We're quite happy to, to have it all working. And then we tried to actually use it, which was the hard part. Ah, and yes, um, since we put, we put quite a lot of force on the, on the antenna, it broke during assembly, and we had to apply a classic um, cable tie fix. Still holds together. The cable tie is still up there. Um, so, with the help of a bunch of friends, we tried to, to actually use it. And first, we tried this uh, small SDR thing we got from the internet. It's like 15 bucks or something, euros or dollars or any currency. And we didn't really get any results. So we asked around, and Hackspace Budapest or, um, actually brought a better SDR, which uh, has way easier driver support, because we too have got no idea what we're actually doing. I'm decent at computers, he's very decent at 3D stuff, but that's it. Radio is not one of, our, one of the things we can actually do. And we actually got some data, it seemed like. So Astra built this built and partly downloaded uh, or stole or somehow got this pipeline working. Um, which does a bunch of, of radio magic stuff, and in the end, we get a satellite picture out of it. Mm. So, so <laughs> yeah, if you stay out long enough, that you can see something. What you can actually see there in the middle, there is kind of a, a separator between the two images, but it didn't really work out <laughs> the way we planned. Mm. We will probably keep trying. Uh, probably keep trying tonight, but so far we learned a whole bunch of stuff, but didn't really actually get any any satellite images. So 
Lacking any images, this is it's pretty much over, but we learned at least that you should test the things before bring them where you intended to use them. So <laughs> that's probably ah. useful for the future. And we would like uh, to thank a bunch of people who really helped us, especially with the radio stuff. Hmm? Sorry? Hmm. Um, especially with the radio stuff, that was uh, Biba, who is not here right now, I think. Mm, At least no. I can see him. No. Uh, McLemon, who helped us with a bunch of 3D printing. Like really a lot. Really, really a lot of 3D printing. Um, Hetty, who actually knows how to how to use all the radio stuff. And uh, Ripper, of course, who designed all of the all of the CAD files and did the 3D printing. And Astra, who helped us with a lots and lots and lots of patience <laughs> and trying things and trying things again and again and again. Um, yeah, any questions? We hope so, yeah. Um, I have also some RTL SDRs and uh, some radios here myself, but uh, if you need some help. Um, the, my question is with the, with the central red box that is black and not the box. Um, if, since it takes so much time, huh, is there not any other production um, <laughs> method that would be more um, economic to produce this? Um. Well, the creator of the instructable just used a big piece of pipe and screwed the rest of the pipes to to this big pipe, but it does didn't seem really precise to us, so we just 3D printed that. Because, uh, yeah, I'm used to 3D print stuff, and that, and, and that would work too, yeah, if you secure it firmly and... There are some instructions which just use uh, a bunch of wood boards, but that seemed kind of boring to us, I guess. And he knows his cut stuff really well, so we ended up with, uh, with this solution. But it looks so nice, this antenna. Have a look at this picture. Doesn't it look beautiful? <laughs> no, we actually built this thing. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Any further questions, comments, or best wishes? Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks.